want to bring in now White House Director of Legislative Affairs, Mark Short there from the White House North Lawn. Always busy uh, in your neck of the woods. Mark, thanks for being on. Hallie, thanks for having me back. So let's start with what's happening later on today. That vote for Mike Pompeo in the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Rand Paul's office is telling us he's a no. You said earlier to White House reporters there on the driveway that you think there's a good chance he's a yes. What do you know that we don't? Hallie, I just think it's incredibly hard for Senator Paul to go back to Kentucky and say that he voted for John Kerry to be Secretary of State, but wouldn't vote for Mike Pompeo to be Secretary of State. But it sounds like that's uh, what he's going to do, Mark. Have you spoken well, with him? His office today? Is he going to change his vote? The, the president's had a couple conversations with Senator Paul um, dating back to last week, but uh, at the end of the day, we know that, that Mike Pompeo is a great pick. He's done a phenomenal job at CIA, and he's uh, the number one in his class at West Point, served admirably in the Army, was graduated magna cum laude from Harvard Law School, and uh, he's a terrific pick, and we think that he will end up getting the votes. All that said, it, it looks like when you say he will get up and end up getting the votes, you mean in the full Senate? Correct. Because, it's, because right now it doesn't sound like he's going to get voted out of Senate Foreign Relations. I'm you not heard... giving up. Yeah, I'm not giving up on the committee vote, Hallie. But really? I, I think that your your um, your your information is well sourced, and I, I think that it's uh, it, it looks iffy for this afternoon. But we do think that we're going to still get the votes when we get to the full floor of the Senate. What message then, Mark, does that send to allies and frankly adversaries who are watching this from around the world, watching the the next yeah. Secretary of State? not get voted out of this committee and instead having to go to a, the full four vote and, and get confirmed that way. I think the message it sends, sadly, Hallie, is that in a lot of our private meetings with uh, with even Democrat senators, is there's been an acknowledgement that he's a great pick, he's a good candidate, he has great credentials, he's done a good job at CIA, but I can't vote for you. And the rationale is simply that the Bernie Sandinista crowd has gotten so loud that they feel beholden to that. But it's 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 sad that American policy reached a point that even positions of national security, there has that much political sway that you're not doing what's in the interest of the country. Let the coward the cowardly voting there is just is reached a new level. Um, Hillary Clinton got voted out 16 to one out of to be Secretary of State. Republicans didn't all like Hillary Clinton's politics, but they supported her because they understood the need to have somebody strong in the role of Secretary of State. The irony here is that Democrats are basically saying, we know it's not in the best interest of the country, but I'm going to do what's in my best interest to win my next primary. Well, wait a second, Mark. So you're talking about what you describe as a cowardly vote here for, for Pompeo, for Mike Pompeo. There is a potentially, from what I understand, an even more difficult vote coming up for Gina Haspel, the person who's going to replace Mike Pompeo. Can you explain why the White House is so concerned about her nomination? Well, that's ways off. We'll have hearings in Three May, weeks. but we feel we feel very confident about Gina as well. She's somebody who served 33 years in the Central Intelligence Agency as a career who has been devoted her entire career to serving our country, been placed in many in many places across the globe, most dangerous places as station chief. Uh, she is somebody who is would be the first female director of the CIA, and uh, we're very confident that when she gets her chance to tell her story, that it'll be very persuasive as well. That said, it already sounds from our report over on the hill like she is going to have an uphill battle potentially how worried are you about that and what are you doing about it Hallie the reality, reality is that we're worried about all of our nominees at this point when we have somebody who typically again is, is not a controversial pick to be head of NASA and the vote last week was 50 to 49 the polarization inside Congress has reached such uh, extremes now that uh, that really there, there's no longer votes based on person's credentials or ability to do the job. It is sheer politics. So I want to ask you, you brought up nominations. The president, as you saw Kristen Welker just report out, tweeted this morning regarding Mike Pompeo, but also about what he said as the Dems will not approve hundreds of good people, including the ambassador yes. to Germany. R Richard Grinnell got voted out of committee months ago. Have you had a conversation yeah. with Mitch McConnell about why he's not being brought to the floor? Yeah, we have conversations about this all the time, Hallie. Because McConnell the can do it. Well, no, here's the challenge that we have, Hallie, is that it would take more than nine years to get all of our nominees confirmed because of the way the Democrats are filling well, up nominations. Wait a second, if the president's so concerned about his ambassador to Germany, why wouldn't Mitch McConnell just bring him to a floor vote? Because, Hallie, we have 300 nominees sitting in the United States Senate that the Democrats, president only mentioned one. the Democrats are not allowing to go through the normal process where you would get unanimous consent on most nominees when they come out of committee. The level of obstruction, 80 filibuster well, votes so far, United States Senate nominees, whereas in the last four presidents Combined in their entire first term, it was 32. Their entire first term, 16 years, was 32. In 16 months, we've had over 80 filibusters. The Democrats are doing everything they can to make sure that we cannot put people inside our administration. But again, isn't that Mitch McConnell's choice of who he prioritizes here? 
No, Hallie. The reality is that that is because Democrats are, there's not enough time on the Senate floor. If you burn 30 hours of debate on each and every one of our nominees, right. it would take nine and a half years to get our nominees confirmed. Uh, again, I, I don't want to belabor this point because I want to ask you about a couple of other points, but it, it is a function of prioritization here. The president's talking about somebody specific. You could potentially put that person to a vote. We could go through that list of 300 people on the okay, United States Senate list and say, okay, how are we going to prioritize each of these? We provide a list of prioritizations to Leader McConnell. We do All hope, right. we do hope well, that Senate Republicans will stay in more on weekends so, to force more of these votes and burn more of the time. That is a point that we have made. I'm going to hit you on a couple more topics, and I know you don't have a ton of time because you're, you're a busy man this morning. North Korea, Mike Pompeo is leading those discussions, obviously, regarding this potential summit with North Korea. Explain something to me, because when I was on Sunday Today Show yesterday, Chuck Todd was on, talking about uh, this exact negotiation. Negotiation. The president was very unhappy about that. The president tweeted about that. You yourself have acknowledged that North Korea has not agreed to this point to, to pledge to denuclearize, right? Hallie, for many decades now, there's been a concern about how we negotiate with North Korea. This president is the first one to get North Korea to stop its testing. Sure, but stopping that, testing is very on, different Hallie, from a pledge hold, to denuclearize. Let me finish. Let me finish. There's a lot more to be done. We know that. And the president has pledged we're going to keep up the maximum pressure campaign until they fully denuclearize. Does so the we president know that. that? We have not. He seems course, to, he, but he seems no, to be Hallie, talking about. Exactly, he seems Hallie, to be saying North Korea <laughs> agreed to denuclearize. That seems to be news. Hallie, he's the one that has said to the administration, we are not going to give up until we're going to keep the maximum pressure on until they fully denuclearize. He's the one that has set that condition for the rest of the administration. So, of course. So how prepared is the president to make concessions to North Korea if and when he gets to the negotiating table with Kim Jong-un? I don't think it's a matter of concessions, Hal. It's a matter of North Korea understanding that we will maintain the maximum pressure until they fully denuclearize and until they return American citizens who they've had in captivity. And is that a precondition for talks committing to the return of those Americans? I will let, I will let um, future Secretary of State Pompeo address uh, what those conditions are. Um, two more quick topics I want to hit you on. Number one, I'm going to give you an opportunity. Robert Mueller, I know you've been asked about this a lot over the last 24 hours, if the president is going to fire Rod Rosenstein to eventually get to Robert Mueller. You, look, just to call a spade a spade, use some hedge words. You said there are no plans. There is no indication. There is no intention. Can you just be definitive about it? Is the president going to fire Rosenstein or not? Hallie, what I've said on other networks and yours as well, so it's like the, the networks have a prayer vigil to say, uh, what is today the day that I Robert no Mueller is going to be fired? no prayer vigil, Mark. That is not a well, fair statement. I'm just asking for a definitive answer. That seems legit. The reality is that every network every day is saying, is today the me the day that Robert Mueller gets fired? He has not been fired. The president has no plans to fire him. How about Scott Pruitt? I know you said the president has full confidence in his EPA administrator. We have confidence, and, we have confidence in Scott Pruitt. So that's not my question. My question is, keeping Scott <laughs> Pruitt in place, is that really draining the swamp like the president promised, given the headlines that Pruitt has faced and given the optics of all this, there, which, by the way, downed Tom Price back in the day? There is much this administration has been doing to help drain the swamp, including setting all sorts of new restrictions upon employees and the revolving door between lobbyists and work in this administration. There's more work we can do, Hallie. We will accept that. But I think Scott Pruitt's doing a great job, and uh, we look forward to keeping him there as EPA administrator. Mark Short, a uh, pleasure having you on the show. Uh, thank you Thanks. for coming and answering some questions. I appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me on. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.